Hello, in this last video of the second week's Python lecture, um, I'll be talking about classes in Python and how you can use the object orientation paradigm in Python. Now, in this first uh, code cell, we define a class, and uh, a class in Python is defined using the class keyword and then a name for this class followed by a colon. And after that, again, with the uh, previous um, occurrences of the colon in Python, we need to indent our code after that. And then this string here is just a doc string to um, define um, some documentation about what the class does. And then in this case we have a pass, and pass is a special keyword in Python indicating that we don't want to do anything. And um, this first class we defined is literally doing nothing. And uh, this pass is necessary because after the colon uh, Python expects an indented block and um, if we don't have the pass here it will look for the indented, uh, indented block and will look for some code that is indented but will not find it and will uh, come to the end of this cell and will throw an error. So we need to have the pass here which just tells Python that um, this is the indented part but we don't want to do anything. So if we execute this we have now defined our class my class. Uh, we can create a new instance of this class, so a new object, by uh, using the class name and adding parentheses. And uh, these parentheses call the internal constructor of the class. And we didn't define a constructor here, and if we don't do that, Python will just use the constructor of the, of the superclass. And by default, every class in Python um, is inherited from the object class, and the object class has a default constructor um, which does nothing. So here we create um, a new instance of my class and save that in my instance, and then we um, print out the type of this class, of this object. And the uh, type is underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot my class. And this double underscore main thing, that is the name of our running program right now. And in Python, um, every program that is currently running has a name, and if the current program is the first one that was executed, um, its name is main, so this double underscore main thing. And I think um, we'll talk about that later as well, but this for now is just the name of the current program. And this can be different, um, for example, if you import code, then the imported code will have a different name, but um, in this notebook it will be main. And then, um, of course, the name of our class, so this is the type of our object. And here we just check um, using the isInstant method if our object that we created is actually an instance of our class. And it indeed is, so yeah, my instance is an instance of my class. And then using this IPython feature with the question mark, we can just print out the doc string that we defined up here. So this shows us um, this doc string that we've declared up there. And um, just some more information about the, the name uh, the type name and um, yeah, where um, where this object is defined in memory. Now um, we can add methods and attributes to these classes, and um, this is everything that makes these classes powerful. Um, as you've seen above, the class that we've just defined can't do anything, so this doesn't help us. So we need these uh, methods and attributes. And here in the example, we create a new class. We call it my class two. And uh, we have a function here, or because it's inside um, a class now, it's a method and not a function. And this is indented, so after the class and the colon, we need an indented block, and every uh, piece of code that is inside this class will be indented. And here we call, um, here we define a function using def, and the function name is very, um, very specific. It's double underscore init double underscore and uh, this is the name of the constructor in Python. So whenever we want to define a constructor for a class, we have to use this double underscore init double underscore. And um, then, as usual, with these um, function definitions, we have to add parentheses and parameters. And in um, methods, in classes, inside classes in Python, we always need this self argument. And when calling a function or a method of a class, um, we don't need to include that, so we don't have to pass this argument, but this is done internally. But this self um, parameter refers to the object itself. So this is uh, similar to this in C++ and Java, for example, um, which also refers to 
its own object inside an object. Um, yeah, we just need this to reference our attributes and other methods. And now what this constructor of my class 2 does is it prints self. So it prints um, its self and um, then also prints the type of the self. And then we just, uh, outside the class, create an instance of this uh, class and, um, yeah, just creating this instance, we'll call this um, constructor and the constructor will print these two things. So first we have the self, um, which is just the object, so the my class 2 object, um, and then the type of self is class uh, my class 2. Here we create another class called my class 3, and um, now we add a parameter to this constructor. So we again have this double underscore in a double underscore function. Um, it still gets the self parameter, we need that. And uh, now we have a second one, it's a number. And then inside the constructor, we assign this number parameter to self.number. And self.number is now a new attribute that we created inside the class. And um, still in Python, we don't need to declare any types. So this just defines uh, an attribute and we have to include the self dot here. So if we didn't write the self dot, um, but instead just number equals number, it would use the parameter here. So it assign the parameter number to itself, which does nothing. Um, but we need the self dot here. Um, so Python knows that we created attribute here and um, assign number to this attribute. And whenever we want to refer to the attributes or methods of a class inside the class, then we always have to add the self dot. So there's no way around that. We just always have to add that. And then we also create another method in this class uh, called change number. It also gets the self parameter. We always need that and a new val. So a second parameter new val. And what this function, uh, what this method does is just assign new val to self dot number. And then outside the class, we can create two instances of these uh, of this class. And the first one uh, we pass it to, and in the second one we pass three. And these are the numbers that get mapped to this number here. So again, we don't have to pass the self when creating an instance. This is done internally, but it's just using the the parameters after self. So here number um, gets these values. And then in the end, um, we just print out the number attributes of the two classes we created. And we can access these attributes using the uh, variable name where we store the objects in and then dot the name of the attribute. So this just gives us two and three. Um, so the number in B is two and the number in C is three. And here we test our function, our method that we uh, declared in my class three. It's, uh, it was called change number and it gets, an, it's a, gets a parameter. And in this case, we pass a string called new value. And uh, after that, we just print out the number uh, attribute of B again. And now this is new value. And here you can already see Python doesn't care about the types. Um, we defined number initially as um, an integer here, but then in change number, we pass a string and number became, an, became a string now. And um, the name of this variable also doesn't matter. So it's called number now, but it's actually a string. So yeah, we might want to do some type checking in here um, or use a different um, name for the attribute. Now, something very powerful in the object orientation paradigm is inheritance. And Python, of course, supports that. Um, and in this example, we start by creating a class animal. And uh, we just define one method in there. Um, and it doesn't get any parameters. And if we don't, in this case here, we don't have the self. So um, this means that this is not part of any object, but this is a class method. So we can't um, refer to self in this method. And this method uh, is actually not really part of an object, but it's part of the class. Um, yeah, and this um, method, if we call it, it just returns true. Um, so we define that animals always are living. And then we create an, another class and call it land animal. And then in this class definition, we add parentheses here and um, put in the animal class. And this tells Python uh, that land animal should inherit from animal. 
So this is the syntax for inheritance in Python. And then in land animal, we declare a constructor and say that um, the land animal has an attribute called has legs, and this is true. And then we also define a method um, called walk, and if we call walk, it will just return tap tap. Now here, outside these classes, we just create an instance of this animal, of this land animal, um, and call it animal. And now we can check what actually this animal is. So we first print out the type of the animal, and then we want to know uh, is the animal instance is an instance of our land animal class, and then is the animal an instance of our animal class. And these both are true. So um, the first one is fairly obvious, I guess, because we defined animal as a land animal. But now the second one, animal is also just an animal, even though we said a land animal here. But this comes from uh, land animal um, being inherited from animal, and every subclass, um, every object of a subclass is also an object of the superclass. All right, and yeah, now we can access the attributes of animal here as well. So animal that has legs is true, and if we call animal that walk, we get tap tap. Now Python also includes multiple inheritance, meaning that um, one class can inherit from multiple superclasses. And um, this is not supported in Java, for example. Um, but yeah, Python can do this. And we first define a water animal here. This is also derived from animal. So this is not multiple inheritance yet, but we just create another class from which we can inherit later. And uh, yeah, this water animal does not have legs, um, but therefore it um, defines a method swim and swim returns splash. And now finally, we create another class called amphibian. And this is multiple inheritance. It um, is derived from land animal and water animal. And here we again just pass. So we, want to, uh, so we don't want to define anything else in this class here. All right. So now we um, want to create an amphibian. Um, we do that, of course, by calling amphibian, the constructor of amphibian. This is. Um, defined in the background and just uses the super constructor. And um, yeah, here we check if amphibian is a part of, uh, is an instance of land animal. It's true. And amphibian is also a part, uh, is an instance of uh, water animal. So this is also true. And now we can also uh, call these two methods that were defined. And um, they actually work. They return tap tap and splash. And now we can also um, ask if the amphibian has legs, and this is true. Now this is true, um, yeah, because um, we have defined land animal to have legs here. Um, land has legs is true, um, and even though water animal says has legs is false, um, the amphibian will have has legs is true, because land animal uh, was defined first here. Okay. Now, going over to um, the super method, um, super refers to uh, the parent class of any other class. And um, in this example, we have a class frog, and this is derived from amphibian. And uh, inside this constructor, which gets another parameter is poisonous, which is uh, true by default, um, we set these attributes of the frog uh, class and then we call this super and uh, add the parentheses here and then dot in it. And what super returns us, so the super call, this returns um, the object of the super class. But this is actually kind of the same object as self, but um, the type is actually amphibian now. So the type of super is amphibian but it's actually the same object as self here. And if we call super.init, it will just call the uh, constructor of the super class. And by this we can, um, for example, if we had some functionality, functionality defined in the constructor of amphibian, uh, using this um, actually execute that code as well. So we wouldn't have to copy that code down, but we can just call the super constructor here. All right, um, yeah, now we create a frog and then we can print out uh, its different attributes and they're all true. 
so we can see that um, it did actually work. So we could, uh, so we were able to create this eats flies uh, attribute, and is poisonous was set to the parameter is poisonous, and uh, this was by default true. So we didn't pass is poisonous here. Um, yeah, and if you want to know more about multiple inheritance in Python, you can have a look at this YouTube video um, that will explain everything in a bit more detail. Now, coming to visibility in Python, um, there is no real visibility in Python, um, as you might have it in C++ or Java, where you can define attributes and methods as uh, private, protected, or public. In Python, everything is public, so you can always access everything that is defined inside a, fi inside a class. Um, there is a convention that um, things that should be private start with an underscore, but if you want, you can still access them. So no one stops you from um, using underscore attributes in, in other objects. Um, and yeah, it, there is no real um, visibility in Python. It's just a convention. Um, now what's a little bit more implemented in the core of Python is this double underscore, um, but it still is not really private or protected. Um, what the double underscore means is, for example, here, this uh, super private attribute, um, it starts with two underscores um, and you can't access this directly from the outside, but you can still access it through a different name. And this um, semi-private with just one underscore, this, is just, this just acts like a normal uh, attribute. And the super private one with two underscores and note that we don't have two in the end. Um, we can't have two in the end. So we have to have less than two, so either one or zero uh, underscores at the end. Um, but if we have two at the front, then Python will rename this. And it will rename this, um, this attribute internally and call it underscore in the class name, double underscore, and then uh, this, this method name. So um, yeah, we, we have it down here. So this would be actually the name after Python renames this attribute um, and it's underscore then the class name here, my class, and then there's uh, just this name of the method uh, of the attribute that we've defined down here. And yeah, we can test this. Um, super private is world and semi private here is hello. And when we create an instance of my class, we can print semi private just fine. Then we call this um, renamed attribute and try to print that out and then we just try to access the super private one normally and here you can see that the last one didn't work but it printed hello and then world um, so the first one hello the semi-private one just worked fine the renamed one we could also access that but underscore underscore super private was not available so attribute error um, the class doesn't have an attribute underscore underscore super private all right, and now finally, um, just a word on commit messages. Please make sure to have um, good commit messages in your repositories. And um, I would ask you to maybe go through this blog post, um, not completely, but just start reading it and um, try to understand why it's important to have good commit messages such that um, other people who might want to look at these repositories um, can, understand, can understand what has been done and um, yeah, what changes were made to the code. And then if you want to um, get deeper into Python, we've also linked a video here. Um, it's quite a long video about a talk, uh, a workshop talk, where someone explains um, the basics of Python in a little bit more detail. Um, and yeah, if you have the time and the motivation to um, get a little deeper into that, you can watch this video. But a lot of things were already covered in this lecture.